G'day, it's Richard Tozzle here. We're uh, the Wairapa Innovation Farmers for establishing uh, clover into uncultivatable hill country. We farm Te Awawa. it's 25 minutes east of Marsden, uh, where we run around 3,000 breeding ewes um, and replacements, 100 beef, beef cows and trading cattle in the mix as well. Uh, we have a property that consists of predominantly entirely hill country with about around about 9% cultivatable. So we're one of three farms that are involved in this trial. Uh, there is also one in the, in the Gisborne area, which is the Faulkners, and also one in the Hawke's Bay being the Swinburns. So each, each area has their own climate, climatic differences and uh, each property is trialling slightly different trials. So, uh, our, our one is slightly different in that we we pretty strict on not wanting to use the chemicals. Um, it's something we feel is too risky for our operation. We've also got a small group of farmers around us just trying to keep us on track and make sure that what we're trying to promote and uh, find from this this whole um, trial is is right for farmers in this area and in, in eastern uncultivatable hill country. When we took on the trial or approached to take on the trial. One of the key things that I was keen on was to be really clear that it is a, it's a change in mindset thinking. Um, we realised that this was going to have a cost to our business in the first year. <clears throat> However, we felt that in the years after that, by dropping the extra seed into our system, it would uh, have a, a large fly-on effect hopefully going forward. To go into this and think that you're not going to have to change your management system is probably the wrong idea and I think we've got to be willing to try different alternatives and uh, think of other opportunities that may come from this. With our property being only 9% cultivatable, we're very limited to the amount of area that we can put into crops and pastures and that type of thing. So the way that I look at this potential trial is that these areas could effectively be taken as being a part of our cropping rotation. So every five years we might come through and do one paddock or two paddocks um, to try and increase the clover content in each of these paddocks. So throughout the trial we'll be using the Farm IQ program to monitor and track all our grazing practices and try and formulate a recipe for how to promote the clover growth and establishment in these, these trial areas. On the first trial in the 60 metre by 60 metre area we hand sowed uh, five different varieties of clover uh, at different variable rates. The first strip was 120 kilos of subclover, which was Antas and Wujanallop. Uh, we, we, next to that we sowed 12 kilos to the hectare of the same brew. Uh, next to that was 12 kilos of arrowleaf. Next to that, 12 kilos of red and white clover mix and 12 kilos of the Lanza was the last strip. Through that strip there was also a 250 kilo Potastic Super mix thrown in there just to see if there was any lift in production from that. So we hand spun on five different uh, varieties and then hoofed and toothed with some tutus running around for a day to get the seed established and uh, try and make as best contact with soil as possible. It was challenging conditions, we'd had a very growthy summer and uh, had been really difficult to uh, get things well under control. Since then we've been uh, flicking cattle through there to just keep the grass down at bay um, and just to encourage the uh, light for the clovers to establish and come away. Um, so right through winter there was just cattle going in there to just really keep the grass down and that type of thing after the initial suppressant spray and since then we've been taking measurements and uh, it was shut up in early September to allow the clovers to um, seed. Within the trial plot one, after having some measurements taken by Paul Muir of On Farm Research, I've been really encouraged to see the growth uh, that has come out of all the varieties. They've looked um, really encouraging and for us personally, really excited to see the amount of clover that's established without the suppressant uh, spray in there too. So in the second trial area, the Hughes paddock, this was the area that really probably in, interests me the most. We made it pretty clear that we weren't interested in doing suppressant sprays. We wanted to encourage the clover that was already in our soils. Um, after putting cages out on various parts of the farm, we actually found that we have a huge amount of subclover in our soils, but 
it never gets the chance to express itself. So the clover content in the Hughes paddock uh, after initial transects taken by Paul Muir was around 13%. So our aim going forward would be in the three year process hopefully to be able to lift that beyond 30%. So we decided that, um, yep, spraying was out. We've planted a lot of poles uh, and have a lot of trees around the property that we just felt in our summer, summer dry area was too risky. Uh, the grazing management from summertime onwards was basically to try and clean up the paddock as best we could. As I mentioned earlier, we had a very growthy spring and summer so it was, and had come out of a pretty horrendous drought. So stock numbers were a bit light and getting cleaned up uh, really effectively was very difficult to do. So initial establishment conditions in the autumn weren't ideal, but um, we got on with it and um, managed to put a strip of 12 kilos to the hectare of subclover, wood genelop and antas, and just sewed that onto a hard face hand sign uh, no fertiliser and yeah, not ideal conditions but initial signs are showing some really, really good populations there. The management through the summer uh, it was grazing hard and then um, autumn was to flick stock through after being sown, so a bit of hoop and tooth, and allow those seeds to germinate and then right through the winter was just standard grazing management. Without overgrazing, um, we didn't hold stock in there for long to try and let the root reserves have a, have a spill, and but to keep the grass at bay and allow the clover to sort of have plenty of light to come through. In early September, we've closed the paddock up and allowed that to basically set its seed and drop its burrs, and um, we're about to introduce stock now, which is early December. The way we've aimed to demonstrate this uh, process is we've split the paddock in two. So the Hughes paddock was cut in two, roughly four and a half hectare paddocks. And one will be under the existing management, so set stocking, traditional farming style, and then the new management on the left hand side. The plan is to manage uh, the, the new blocks um, through grazing again right through next year and October of 2018 we hope to hold a field day here on the property. During next year we'll be also introducing fertiliser trials into the area just to see what sort of brews are going to give us our best bang for buck and really try and lift those legumes.